Welcome to the 13th Tokiniandi Kanji lesson. Today we're going to cover the meaning, building blocks, writing, historical evolution where applicable, and a story to memorize each of the following kanji. We'll also learn the parts and radicals needed for those kanji. Today, there's only one new part, and stick around to the end of the lesson where we'll be doing a quick quiz to help everything stick. By the way, check the pinned comment below this video to see why we are not learning readings for each kanji just yet. Let's get into it. The kanji we'll be learning today are all fairly simple. This one is a pictograph that means river. The official radical of river is itself, river, which makes sense since it's often found in other kanji. We can break it down into a no part and two staff parts though. There are three strokes in river following exactly the order we'd expect. We draw the no part on the left and then the middle vertical line somewhat shorter than the no. We then draw the staff on the right about the same length as the no part, though in some fonts and methods it's a little longer than both of the lines on the left. Historically, this hasn't changed a whole lot, though it used to have more bends and curves than it does today. It was supposed to represent two banks of a river with the water flowing down the middle. This was more clear in the oldest versions of the pictograph, though it's not hard to see now either. As a side note, this is sometimes written as what looks like three ku characters stuck together. To really solidify that no part here, we're going with the story, this is a river, with no pretending to be part of it over on the left bank. He's like curving his body to fit the bank of the river, trying to blend in for some reason. Maybe Fu is after him for a late rent payment or something. Remember that it's a good idea to pause the video after each story and really try to imagine it, or to create a story of your own that will help you remember the kanji even better. Make sure the story contains the meaning and every single part in some way. This is our first and only part for this lesson. It means basket. More specifically, a waste basket. This is an official radical, but is not a kanji on its own, so it does not have a radical. Hold on a second. Getting a phone call from the alien overlords that roamed ancient China. Hello? This is actually a kanji. And is its own radical. Whatever, man. The only word I could find with this in it is the word for this radical. We will never learn this as a kanji, though now you already have. We're going to consider wastebasket, wastebasket's only part. There are two strokes in basket. We start with the stroke on the left, which looks essentially like an L, though the bottom is longer in some cases to accommodate whatever you're planning to put inside of it. We then draw the final vertical line on the right about the same length as the one on the left. Apparently, this is supposed to be a pictograph of a container with a crack on the side. Not sure where they're seeing the crack, unless they're talking about the fact that we can see inside of it from the side like this. Another explanation I read is that it's the pictograph of a wide open mouth, but this doesn't differentiate it enough from the kanji for mouth, so we're not using that. Our story is just a pictograph. It's a waste basket. Do you have the time to listen to- Oh, no, wait, that's basket case. If you like simple stories, simply hit the like button. This next kanji is a beautiful pictograph of a mountain. Its official radical is mountain. And though it would be simple enough to use this as a singular pictograph, we're going to break it up into a staff and waste basket to help us with the next kanji. It's perfectly acceptable to just consider this a single part though, if you prefer. There are three strokes in mountain. We start with the middle and longest vertical stroke, and then draw the L shape of basket, though the vertical portion of this stroke is usually a bit shorter than the horizontal stroke. We then draw the final vertical stroke on the right that often cuts past the horizontal L stroke when written though not in many computer fonts. Historically, this has always been a pictograph of mountain peaks viewed from a distance. 
The story we used is really optional. You could easily stick with the pictograph, though you're going to be angry about the next kanji if you do. Mountains are waste baskets for wise men's staves. Or staffs? Staves? Of course, this also looks like a mountain. Imagine all the wise men going up into the mountains to become wise men. Realize the wise thing to do is just stay in the mountains, and their staves or staffs pile up over time. These two mountains stacked on top of each other mean... Hello? Yes, ancient Chinese alien overlords? This isn't two mountains stacked up? It's not any mountains stacked up? That's it. I'm leaving. Alright, I guess I'm back. The official radical for this kanji is wastebasket. Nah, I'm leaving. All right, all right. The parts are a staff and two baskets. There are five strokes in leave. We start with the vertical staff. Wait, why? Don't vertical strokes that cut through other strokes come... L f fine, you know what? This kanji is just weird. Let's accept that, Andy. <sighs> we then draw the waste basket on top. L followed by vertical stroke, and the waste basket below, slicing below the final L, just like in mountain. Okay, so historically, I can see what happened here. It was originally a foot in a basket, or rather a foot leaving a basket or hole, apparently. I guess that somehow morphed over time into two mountains stacked on top of each other. I'm sorry, I'm never going to unsee that. Which is why Mountain gets an honorary place in our story. To leave his mountain, the wise man shoved his wise man's staff through the ground and found only another wastebasket mountain beneath it. And this is why I did what I did for the Mountain Kanji. I'm glad that the kanji we're covering today at least look simple. Like this one, the companion to leave, which means entrance or enter. The official radical of entrance is entrance, and it is its only part, though I suppose you could argue for no and backwards no parts. You'll notice that this kanji looks very similar to person, which is why the way you write each kanji is particularly important here. You'll remember that the second stroke in person starts from around the middle of the first stroke in writing, while the second stroke in entrance starts way above the first stroke, and almost to the left of it, and it's swiped out to the right. In font, very often a horizontal line is drawn on top, which then cuts down 90 degrees. This is really just to differentiate it from the font for person, and is not how it's actually written, though you certainly can write it that way if you like. It's similar to how the kanji for 8 looks in many fonts. You could really just take the two strokes in 8 and pull them together, for both the written form and the font form. Historically, you could be forgiven for thinking this was a person kanji, but it was apparently a pictograph of an entrance. So for our story, I've also created a pictograph of an entrance. A pictograph of an entrance to the great halls of the wise men who left their mountains. If you'd like to go through that entrance, make sure to subscribe. It won't get you any closer to that goal, but it might help you learn some more Japanese. Thank heavens that all the kanji today have been fairly simple to write, and remember, this one means heaven. I will keep doing that. The official radical for heaven is big. I almost would have expected it to be its own radical, but I'm not too disappointed. We can break it down into a one and big. There are four strokes following exactly that order. We draw the horizontal one on top, then the horizontal line in big. We then draw person inside there, with the first curved line cutting through the horizontal line in big, and the final curved line starting below the big horizontal line. Okay, you know how I'm always joking about aliens in ancient China? Well... Apparently, this was a hieroglyphic that was supposed to emphasize the head of a human? 
Some descriptions suggest it was also illustrating the sky or heavens above that human's head. But I mean, come on guys, aliens, am I right? Or were they suggesting that we get to create heaven in our heads? Let's see. Why do they never answer when I have questions? Our story is as follows. From big heavens, which are just a single big thing, one big fluorescent worm fell. Please share your own stories down in the comments because it might help others more than this one did. Which brings us to the lesson 13 quiz. In this section of the video, I'll show you a flashcard with the English meaning for a kanji. Pause the video when we show each card and try to remember how to write that kanji. Next, write it on your hand with your finger or on a piece of paper. Then press play and see if you were right. The best way to remember kanji you just learned is to search your memory for the story we taught you or the one you made based on the English word on the flashcard. Our first card is river. Next is entrance. Just a few more. Here's leave. And then there's heaven. Finally, we have mountain. Let us know how many you got right down in the comments. You can learn the next five kanji by clicking here, if the video is already out. If you don't want to wait, you can continue learning with our level one kanji flashcard deck for Anki on tokeniandy.com. We're also releasing kanji series videos early for all the members there, so check it out if you want a head start.